Hi, everyone, and welcome to our July Hope Session, Beyond Self-Care, Cultivating Daily Acts of Self-Devotion. I'm Heidi Parker. My pronouns are she, her. I'm Community Initiatives Manager, and I am your Zoom host today. This program is presented as part of our free hope series, Healing Online for People Everywhere, which we created to support the resilience of our global community through social emotional arts. Each workshop offers a supportive space for connection, healing, and empowerment as we navigate the changes in our world. If you have previously attended a HOPE session, welcome back. If you are new, thank you for joining today. We're grateful you're all here to create and learn together and grow together as a community. Today's program is in a meeting format, so please keep yourself muted until prompted otherwise. We are recording today's session in speaker view. We'll pause the recording during reflection to be shared on our YouTube channel. And you are welcome to leave your cameras on as you feel comfortable. We'd love for you to actively participate. Our session today is scheduled for an hour and a half. So feel free to ask questions in the chat as they arise or use the raise hand function. Before we begin, we would like to start by acknowledging the Tongva Nation on whose land the city of Los Angeles, where we are based, rests today. We hold respect and gratitude for the Tongva people who still consider themselves the caretakers of this land. And by their example, we are reminded of our responsibility to our planet and to one another. So let's take a moment in our own way to honor the indigenous communities of past and present on whose land you are joining from today. I'd like to welcome today's presenter. Stacy Emanuel Dell is the founder of Amantra. She is an award-winning vocalist, speaker, and music psychotherapist with over 15 years experience in mental health treatment. She has worked with the Grammy Foundation, LA Opera, Google Arts and Culture, Netflix, and Young Arts. In addition to be a faculty member for UCLA Arts and Healing and the California Institute of Integral Studies, she has spoken at events like Women in Music, National Arts Policy Roundtable and Sound Health Summit. She has also appeared on CBS News in Renee Fleming's Music and Mind Live and is featured in the documentary Proven. She holds a master's degree in music therapy from New York University, in addition to certifications in sound and music healing from the Open Center and Vocal Psychotherapy from the Vancouver Vocal Psychotherapy Institute. So we are very excited to have Stacey with us today and I will turn it over to her. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome, happy Wednesday. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for showing up and for being here for this wonderful workshop. I wanna thank UCLA Arts and Healing and Heidi for being my wing woman and making everything run smooth in the tech area um, and for the wonderful introduction. So welcome everyone, happy to see everybody's face popping into place. I see some familiar faces. I've been looking at the chat, a lot of East Coast energy, which is exciting because I was raised in um, DC, Maryland. I was born in New York. So um, I just love the virtual component of life um, at times because it allows us to gather, you know, and people who would normally maybe be able to be in contact, get to, get to kind of connect. So it's wonderful to see people from everywhere. So um, my name is Stacy. I'm a music psychotherapist. Um, I'm also an author of the forthcoming workbook, uh, Choose Yourself, a 12 week journey to becoming the God of your own heart. And so I just wanna let everyone know that most of what we're gonna be doing today is sourced from that workbook. And um, I'm excited to share more about that towards the end of the workshop. Um, but I, being the sound person that I am, I always open every circle the same way, and that is with sound. So hopefully there won't be too much background sound because I definitely live in an urban area. Um, so if you see me turn my camera off and, uh, you know, the music stops, it's just me going and closing all the windows. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we won't have to do that. So, um, you know, we hear a lot about mindfulness and we know um, that it's good, but it's not always necessarily as easily as accessible of how do I become mindful? How do I become present? So my practices that I do for myself personally and the ones that I offer you today are simply tools to connect to the presence 
And one of my favorite ways to do that is through the voice. So voice and vocalizing is my, my first love. And um, I would invite you during this opening, if you are in a place or a space where sound is possible, um, that you can participate. This can be interactive. Um, we'll begin with just some breathing and then we'll move into a, a vibrational experience also known as humming. And through the humming, we'll get an opportunity to actually feel the vibration of the tone, of your own tone in your voice, almost like an inner massage. And then we'll open up from that into what we call a vocal activation. And that's a call and response experience where you will be able to be in community with yourself through sound. And I'm saying all of that to say that it's all optional. So if you would rather be in a place of receptivity, then you can simply just let all of this wash over you and just have the experience. Another big theme of today is going to be exploring needs, our core needs. And so this is our kind of first exercise in that, in just tuning into what you need right now. And sometimes we just need to receive. Sometimes we need to come out of doing and just step into being. So if that's the case, then we don't have to do any response to my call. You know, you can just be and receive. So let's just all take a breath together. And just acknowledge whatever it took for you to get here today. Maybe there was an obstacle mentally, emotionally, physically. Maybe there was resistance. Maybe there were other things to do. There are a lot of distractions in society. So let's just first honor ourselves for being here and getting here to a place where you can focus undistracted attention to yourself, at least for the next 90 minutes. And we're just going to place on the inhale a quality that you would like to embody and anchor into this moment. It may be something that feels a little bit elusive. It may be something a little far away, but just something you want to say hello to. So today I'm breathing in vitality. And so just inhale on a quality. And then just allow the body to naturally exhale whatever isn't matching that frequency of what you're inhaling. And just notice how natural that is to simply breathe. And just allow the breath to become rhythmic. Maybe ensconcing you in the place of safety and feeling held. And then just send the breath somewhere, some part of the body that might be holding tension or that might be still a little bit engaged. breath to move that energy for you, to shift it. And then with this next breath, we're going to connect to vibration and sound as a way to open our circle today and to begin this communion with the self. So we always go, or I always say go for the lowest hanging fruit. So instead of searching for a high note, just, just step into the note that feels closest to you for this home. So for me, it's going to be something very low because I'm an alto. Just take a breath and be 
begin to hum again. somewhere in the body that needs a little attention. welcome to, and if not, just let it wash over you. So we're going to start with this line. I have everything. And you say, I have everything. Great. That I together, creating a little bit of warmth, acknowledging the sound vibration that just occurred, and then just place your hands on your heart, or maybe on your solar plexus, there you go, and just notice what you notice. Beautiful. And so it is with my great honor and, and my great intention for us to hold this kind of frequency for the rest of the time. Um, sound has a way of bringing us home to ourselves. And I always distinguish between sound and singing. Um, singing is 
can be performance, right? Which can oftentimes take us into another place, um, into the mind of, you know, watching, you know, judgment, ego, et cetera. Um, so that was really more about experiencing your own vibration and how your own vibration can heal you. And that's one of the ways I always like to start and open a space um, by offering a tool, because I think that's something that we can bring into our daily practices. And, um, and this workshop is really all about daily practice. And it's about going beyond self-care. And, you know, I'll just kind of open up and give an opportunity for me to share a little bit about what that means and how I came to that, um, mainly because uh, it's like, well, what does that really mean? And I can be completely transparent and say that I was one of those people that was really always pretty convinced um, that I was caring for myself and that I love myself. Um, so if someone were to say, or my therapist used to say to me, you know, uh, you know, you have to love yourself before someone else could love you. Um, I think that would probably be the thing that would make me kind of want to throw a shoe across the room at her. <laughs> because it's like, really? I mean, I thought that I was loving myself all this time, right? Like, that's what I was under the impression that I was doing. But yet there were occurrences in my life that were reflecting other experiences to me. I was constantly for a long time attracting the same kind of person in my life. I was always in these places and spaces where I was experiencing and re-experiencing my core wound. And my core wound personally was uh, an abandonment wound, having a parent who was an alcoholic, um, creating a dynamic of emotional unavailability or the experience of that. And then I would perpetuate that through my relationships throughout my life. So I really couldn't understand um, why I was doing all this work on myself, doing all of this therapy, but yet I was still having the same experience over and over again. And there were very, very dark moments that I would have where I would just be like, this is, nothing's ever gonna change, I'm just gonna be stuck you know, with this wound forever. Um, and so for me, things kind of all came to a head in 2020, like it did for many of us, um, where I had two losses occur. I had, you know, the death of my father and my partner at the time um, split, you know, and that, that experience created a very um, big vortex for me where all of a sudden this double abandonment occurred and it took me right back into that core wound that I wished that I had healed. And what was very interesting was I was doing a trauma training at the time. And the trauma training were, were teaching us how we needed to resource our trauma clients before we go into the depths of the healing component. And the way that would look is we would sit down and we would write down these resources and we would interview them and find out, you know, what are the things in your life that are supportive for you? What are the things in your life where you feel a sense of deep connection? And we would use that list and utilize those resources throughout the trauma treatment, right? And I thought that was interesting because at the moment I was pretty traumatized. I was actually not even realizing that abandonment trauma and relational trauma is a real thing. So all the time I had been experiencing abandonment, it was, it was trauma. So I didn't even know that. But what it did was it gave me an idea. It said, okay, well, if I have to resource my clients who are experiencing trauma, then surely maybe I need to resource myself because I am in the middle of my core wound exploding in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a racial pandemic. It was so much going on at the time. So I sat down and started to create my own list of resources for myself, of all the things that I can rely on to pull from. Um, to bring me through um, what was really the, 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 I like they call the kernel of the core wound. It was really healing that thing once and for all, you know. And um, that's really where this came from. The idea that practices can be curated based upon my particular personal needs of what I need. So that's why we began that chant with, I have everything that I need. Because for me, the turning point was not just going and getting my nails done, but it was actually tuning in to what my core needs are and then being able to meet those needs myself intentionally through practices. So that's what we're gonna do today. So that's my little story and that's how it all came about. Um, but I wanna open it up to you all. I know we've got some a nice amount of people in here. So, um, and, and then we've got cameras off, which is completely fine because a big part of this um, workshop is going to be a grounding session. Um, where we're going to be cameras off and I'm going to be guiding you all through a practice. It's going to be very experiential. And then the, towards the end of the workshop, I'll give you all the, you know, more of the worksheet materials and, and give you a, a glimpse of what that could look like. Um, but I wanted to just kind of stay in the um, experiential space for today and 
Um, so with that said, let's use the chat. I would love to just open it up for anyone to share in the chat if there's any particular intentions that you have or just anything in particular that you're bringing to the space um, that you would like to explore. And that way I'll be able to roll that into, you know, our meditation that we're gonna do today, our grounding practice. Um, so the chat is open, share a little bit, maybe just one or two words um, or one sentence about, um, you know, what, what your intention is. And, I will read a few of them out if it's okay with you all, but it'll just give me an idea of who's in the room, especially since all I see right now are a bunch of little boxes that are with names in them. <laughs> wow, and the space of needing to rediscover confidence in myself, beautiful in my decisions. Mm, yes, new ideas of how to take care of myself, beautiful. Thank you, Vidhu. Yeah, that's just a little piece of it. I feel like I should play a little music while we're putting these uh, chats in. So, Self-compassion on my healing journey. Mm -hmm. And begin trauma, cultural laws, wow. Yeah, this will be beautiful in terms of the, the practices we're gonna be moving through. Thank you all for sharing. Living with grief. Support grief and loss issues at a personal and community level. Mm. Appreciation for the healing powers Ooh, of deep rest as is this cultivating Sabbath energy here on a Wednesday afternoon. Yes, David. Consistency and owning and caring for my I'm in the space of experiencing a toxic workplace while starting a master's degree to move on to something truly more in the field of helping others. Beautiful transition, yes. By the way, if you don't want me to read yours, you can just send it to me directly. I kind of like the sound of reading the intentions. Finding the strength and safety within and stepping into my power, getting over multiple trauma and burnout and to be more available for my community. Oh, you're so welcome. Nonprofit Hago Mail, wow, provides expressive arts programs for women who have experienced trauma and always looking to learn new tools to share. Fantastic. To honor the peace I am developing with my intuition and the conversation I want to regularly have with it or rest from it. Amazing. Take care of myself and expand on expressive art. Wow, thank you all. Such beauty in this room. Surrendering manufactured fears that cause me to spiral out and away from presence. Wow. Yes. I am resonating with all of these. Supporting family members while holding my own care and boundaries. Yes, absolutely. Well, those can keep rolling in. I mean, I just have to say you all in the right place. We're going to be doing a lot of this kind of beautiful work and exploration. And, you know, boundaries is a really big part of it. And I think that we've been seeing a lot more of um, boundary <laughs> things happening in the media and the news, a lot of more examples. It's more in our you know, uh, mainstream conversations of what setting these boundaries are. And um, for me, being a hypersensitive person, boundaries were really always about learning how to not absorb every single thing that came into my field. Because for me, I'm, I'm a bit of a sponge. Um, and what it also means is for me to be able to say no when I need to say no and to tap into that sacred no. Um, and yet we all understand that boundaries in many ways are not necessarily the easiest things to enact because when we set, set a boundary, right, then what can happen is a person can kind of push up against that boundary or we may risk being rejected, which of course is in many ways a core fear. So one of the ways I like to explore boundaries is in an energetic sense through a practice. So the practice that we're going to do to kind of begin um, this exploration into caring for ourselves um, is a very, very beautiful 
um, uh, grounding practice. So um, I think what we will do is just kind of do a little bit of overview of what that really is, because I think we hear a lot about grounding. In fact, I was looking at something the other day and one of the baseball players now, I forget his name, I think it's Kristen Keller. Um, I think he plays for Arizona. He started this whole trend because before each game, he's you know going barefoot in the you know in the baseball field and he's walking around before each game and he and, and they said that he's calling it earthing, and I was like no I don't think that he coined that like you know we know all about earthing and we've heard that kind of a thing, and so you know grounding in many ways as the precursor for you know setting boundaries. Um, and as the precursor for any kind of inner work that we do, I think it's such an incredible pra practice and process. So just as an overview, one of the reasons why we do grounding um, as the core of this particular practice and the core of the workbook is grounding um, is because someone said it beautifully, being in presence, right? Cultivating presence. The mind doesn't know how to be here now. It's either going to take us into the future where there's anxiety or it's going to spiral us into the past where there's depression. So the idea is for us to be able to cultivate presence by being here now. Being grounded into the earth, actually having a grounding practice is the difference between not being grounded. Where, for example, when you know you start off the day with your best intentions that you're going to have a good day, but then you go outside in LA, here, I'll speak for LA, and you get in the 405 and then someone cuts you off and then all of a sudden, you know, you're off on that side and then you have a bad day, you have a bad conversation with a coworker. And so what happens is it begins to be this, uh, my mom calls it a comedy of errors, right? And the way I experience that is kind of being like a leaf on the wind just kind of blowing, 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 blowing. And so one of the things that we can do to prevent that experience of just kind of being a leaf on the wind is to cultivate a grounding practice. And a grounding will allow you to be able to be present. And the way I like to think of it metaphorically is like, imagine you're this tree that has roots into the earth. And yes, things might happen and you might have these branches that blow like leaves, right? But you're ultimately, you're rooted into the earth, right? So stuff happens, it comes your way, but it doesn't take you outside of yourself. So grounding is a beautiful way to start each day um, in that way. And what we'll do in our practice today is you'll notice that I'm going to really lead you all to create a space around yourselves that is an energetic boundary. And that's gonna be about clearing out other people's energies, clearing out other ideas, clearing out whatever it is that you may have accumulated. And then being able to create that energetic boundary and, ha and hold your space. And then it's my experience that as we do this, it gives us a better opportunity to then drop into the core question of our day today. If you haven't figured it out, <laughs> it's what do I need? Because it's the needs and the curation of the, of the uh, resources, which is the third part of this. Um, that is the, the core thing, right? But how do we know necessarily what we need, right? If we are a leaf on the wind. And I'm about to really break it down because not only do we may not know what we need because we're a leaf on the wind, but some of us, like myself, have been programmed to, okay, really, really um, address the needs of others first, right? So because of my background and upgrade bringing, as I mentioned before, with my, you know, parent who was um, an, uh, an alcoholic, one of the side effects of that is becoming very, 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 very good at fixing, healing, saving, and being there for other people, right? So that's one of the things that I was natural at. And the side effect of that is that I really didn't honor my own needs. I didn't even really think I had any needs. I was kind of one of those people that was like, oh, I'm good. Everybody, oh, I'm good, oh, I'm good, I'm all right, you need, oh, I'm good. So when it came to really asking myself what my needs were, it was, it was kind of revolutionary. So that's going to really be our core question for today that we're going to ask. And what you might find when we get into our practice today is that you may need, of course, more than one thing. What we're really interested in, in tuning into today is what are your core needs, right? We looked at this chat and we said, okay, I see rest, right? Rest could potentially be a core need for today right um for me uh what i would always say was a core need for me was you know to feel loved really to be adored and doesn't that make sense 
Because if I had an experience with an emotionally um, unavailable parent, or if I experienced a parent as emotionally unavailable, then being loved, being attuned to, being mirrored, right, was not a met need. So there lies one of our doors that you can use today in your practice if you have a difficult time exploring or identifying what your core need is. One of the things you can do is you can tap into what need did you have as a child that did not get met? What need as a child did you have that did not get met? Was there an unmet need in your household? For those of us who are parenting our parents, right? That could be a myriad of things, right? So that's one of the ways that you can kind of tune in to what your needs are. And, you know, I'll give you all some other resources towards the end in terms of, you know, quizzes you can take and things like that. But I really didn't want this to be a analytical practice. I really wanted us to have a practice where you drop down into your heart space, which is what we're gonna do. And you can really ask that question, what do you need? And then from that answer that you get, we will then shift towards the end of the group into curating those daily devotional practices that are connected to your needs. And what I really mean by curating, right? Because again, getting your nails done is, may not be the thing that you need, right? Like that doesn't really work for me, honestly. I'm a little neurotic. So I'm always kind of looking at whether they're gonna snip my, my toenail with the thing. It's not very relaxing, honestly, for me, you know? But for some people it is. But that's what they say. Oh, you need to relax. Go get your nails done. Oh, get a massage. Okay, massage might be good if one of your core needs is physical touch, right? If one of your core needs has something to do with that kind of experience, right? Um, but if your core need, you know, is to be loved and adored, right? Then maybe it's about doing something that really speaks directly to that, right? So that's what we're going to be doing towards the end. But I would love to lead us now into um, our core practice, which is going to be our grounding. And uh, and then we'll get a chance to kind of look at this in a, in a again, from a non-analytical perspective. So take a breath. Yay. So we're going to do this beautiful exploration into core needs. Um, just to introduce this practice, uh, this is a grounding practice that we're going to do. It is anchored by guitar and with guitar. One of the reasons why we use the guitar is because it just really does give the mind somewhere else to kind of rest. It helps to hold the mind in place. Um, it'll also be guided. So at any moment, the guidance, the verbal guidance, or the guitar begins to become a distraction, you are welcome to let go of all of that and simply have your own experience of grounding. And the goal here again is to come out of the mind and really, really ask the question, what do I need? And to tune into whatever those core needs are. And then afterwards, we'll round up, we'll share a little bit, and then we'll move into curating our devotional practices. So you're more than welcome to turn your camera off if you would like um, and find a comfortable spot. Uh, by the way, this is a trauma-informed practice, meaning um, this is not a transcendental meditation. We will not be traveling um, over the Pacific Ocean or over any ocean. Um, we're really going to be traveling deeper into our own bodies. So just know that this grounding is um, suitable for uh, trauma. Okay? So you're safe. I'm going to also turn off my camera. And... We will have a lovely journey. So just find a comfortable place. And just take another breath. And so this practice can be experienced laying down or sitting in a chair. Since this is a grounding practice, I tend to feel a lot more grounded when I am in my chair with my feet on the ground. But again, it's completely optional. So as we begin
begin the earlier practice with the breath. So we begin with the breath again. And my favorite spiritual teacher, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, once said that we cannot breathe in the past and we cannot breathe in the future. We can only breathe now. And so I interpret that in this moment to mean that if I am breathing and if I am focused on the breath, that means my mind is in the present moment. So we just use the breath now in this moment to anchor us into our attention into this moment now. So just watch the body breathe. And just notice how the body breathes itself. And just allow yourself to let go of any effort So we step out of doing. next breath that we begin our grounding practice. And so we have the option to utilize a mantra to further assist us in being present in this moment. And that mantra today is I am This is a phrase that has been utilized trans religiously through many, many different belief systems as a way to cut through the static of the mind and to bring the awareness into the heart. So inhale on the I and then exhale on the to wander, you just bring your attention back to the I am affirmation. So we ground by activating our imagination in this moment, pulling our attention away from any thoughts. And just begin to allow your attention to drift to the bottoms of the feet and begin to feel the sense of your feet being connected to the earth. And in your mind's eye, begin to trace a line of energy from the base soles of the feet and allow those lines of energies to move down through the earth watching it travel through the floorboards and through the layers in the rock and the sediment until it reaches the core of the planet clicking into place And then with this next breath, just allow this line of energy to begin to expand, becoming wider and wider. And just allow the imagination to visualize 
those lines of energy becoming wider and maybe even forming into roots at the base of the feet. And just allow these roots to be strong and hollow, allowing your body to release any additional tension or any anxiety through the feet and down through the earth. So similar to lightning that's always seeking ground, this grounding practice can be very, very supportive in helping to decrease anxiety. And so as an added visual, you are welcome to just picture and visualize any anxiety that the body is holding, moving down through the feet allowing the earth to receive it as it would receive that lightning from the sky. And breathe as your body begins to disengage certain, maybe your shoulders, certain joints. Begin to let go and become even more grounded in the process. And for those of us who are laying down on our backs, we can do this practice as well from the base of the spine. And even if you're sitting, you can do this as an added grounding practice. And just visualize again a line of energy, but this time from the base of the spine. Traveling down taking that journey through the earth, through the layers and the rocks and the sediments. Until that center line from the base of the spine connects to the center of the earth. And similar to the feet, just allow this line of energy to expand, becoming perhaps even as wide as the width of the chair or the width of the hips. And visualize that line of energy becoming hollow and strong. And just let an image come to mind that feels supportive to you. I like to see the redwood tree as a supportive grounding image for me, connecting to the spine as a grounding cord. But maybe if for you it's a beam of light or a cascade of water. So just use your imagination. Breathe and allow your body to release even deeper anything that it's holding through that grounding cord, releasing through the spine down into the earth. judgment or any analysis we live in a busy busy world and that causes a very busy busy mind so we just let go of any critique and just simply bring our attention back to the breath again back to the guitar back to our grounding practice next breath we're just going to allow our attention to drift now to the heart space and similar to heart math we're just going to allow ourselves to begin to breathe in that I am presence and begin to breathe it in through the heart inhaling through the heart and exhaling through the heart
So stay with the breath. As we anchor in our attention through the heart space, we begin to ask ourselves our question for the day, which is, what do I need? What is one core need that I have today? And just allow this question to settle in and germinate like a seed. Not expecting any direct words, but maybe even visions and images or pictures emerge. Maybe there's a memory of an unmet need that acts as a little bit of a guide to the answer. And so whatever it is that we sense, we just breathe into our hearts knowing that we are safe, we are grounded, this practice with an act of self-validation, another visual, and this is called the golden sun practice. And together as a community, we're just going to imagine that we're able to visualize a magnificent golden sun above your head. And in this golden sun is going to be your own essence, your own power, your own energy, and in the name of setting boundaries, <laughs> we are simply going to allow that golden sun to take on a magnetic quality, and we're going to let that golden sun just call back our power from anywhere where it might be, any circumstances, situations, any experiences that felt disempowering in any way, just allow that golden sun to become full, full, full to overflowing with your own power. And as that golden sun becomes bright and robust, it begins to spill over. Just allow yourself to be as a cup. Allow yourself to receive that golden light pouring in through the head and finding its way into your feet. Filling in every single toe, pinky toe, ring toe, middle toe, big toe. Allow that golden sun to fill in the soles of the feet, the ankles. Yes. Moving at your own pace, 
allow that golden sun to find its way into your calves and into the knees. allow the golden sun to continue its journey of the leg channels, filling in the hamstrings and the quadriceps, finding its way into your seat, the pelvic bone, the hip flexors, and just breathe deeply and feel yourself becoming full to overflowing every single cell, every single nook, cranny being filled to wholeness with the brightness and essence that is you. Allow that golden light to fill in the solar plexus, moving into the belly, reigniting your fire. Sense of self validating all of you as it continues to move up now, filling in your heart space, allowing your heart to become full to overflowing with your own unconditional love, your own self-affinity and positive self-regard. And just allow that golden sun to continue its journey now into the throat, into your voice box, that place and space where you speak your truth, your own unique message, and then let that golden sun pour down the shoulders and through the arms and through the hands, activating your creative channels. And then let it just continue up into the head and through the head, filling in the center of your mind, cleansing, neutralizing any thoughts that are not in alignment with you in this exalted state. And just breathe it again as you feel yourself whole, feel yourself in your natural state of being. As someone said so beautifully here, resting in your wholeness. And when you feel completely full of this golden light, we're just going to begin to slowly bring a little bit of attention to the fingers and to the toes. And then just begin to like bring some slight movements there without rushing in any way without pushing, just allowing ourselves to remain in this state of receptivity, this state of wholeness. And then when you're ready, you can begin to roll the neck and bring some more movements into Hold the silence for a moment. I'm going to play a little bit of music just to kind of get us in the energy of doing some journal writing. And so if you do have a pen and a pad nearby um, or just something you can write with, even if it's, you know, your phone. I like to write with pencils and pens though, kind of the tactile experience, but whatever you have is fine. And um, just take a moment to maybe five minutes to just write down anything you noticed, any experiences you may have had, just a little journaling time, maybe around what core needs you discovered, um, if any, and uh, we'll go from there.
Just take one more minute. So we can just begin to slowly wrap up any thoughts as we bring our attention back into the room. And um, I would love to open it up for reflections. Um, I don't think that we have to do, uh, you know, digital hands, but if you want to raise your digital hand. Um, and I just want to say, you know, one of the reasons why I think it's so important to, to have a practice like that, it doesn't have to be that one, but any kind of practice where you come out of the mind. You know, my one of my favorite quotes is the Albert Einstein quote, you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness in which it was created. So if we were to come in here and just talk all the time, in many ways, it, it could be that we're just kind of spinning on the surface mind, you know, examining burnout, examining boundaries, but all from this still from within the context of where a lot of those problems originate or issues originate, right? So my hope is that that practice, as, as short as it was, just gave you a little time out, right? From the thinking, incessant thinking of the mind and allowed you to kind of catch, you know, something, catch a, catch a drift, catch an energy, catch a vibe, and maybe even tune in more to what you need um, from a different place, from a, maybe even from a higher space of consciousness when we're not in the mind. So that was the main reason why this was a big part of the session today. Um, so I'm opening it up to anyone who would like to share any insights, um, either via chat. If, if you share in the chat, um, I'll probably read them just so that you know everybody can hear it. Um, but you're more than welcome to come off um, of mute and um, you can turn your camera on uh, if you would like and just share any insights, reflections, or even any questions. Uh-oh, did everybody fall asleep? <laughs> I didn't put y'all to sleep, oh Lord. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'll say something. Yes. Yeah, jump in. Hi. Hi. I feel like I went to a different plane that was like somewhere uh that wasn't quite sleep and it and it wasn't full consciousness. But it was like this like soothing slumber that let me feel a lot of light around me. I almost felt like I was like floating out of my body, which I really appreciated. And it got and it quieted my mind from all of the noise that I feel like the day can bring. And it just made me really appreciate what going into Medita meditative states does for the quieting of the noise and like mm -hmm. I started to think about well when is that when is it the best time for that to happen for me and how often do I need to make sure I'm infusing that into not only my practice as I care for others or create space for others but how am I doing that on a regular basis 
for my fueling. So I really appreciated that. Thank you, Stacy. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yes. I love what you said about the, the slumber. That's such a good word. <laughs> slumber. Kathy. Uh, yes. Um, I uh, tuned into a cup. First of all, that was deeply relaxing. The humming mm -hmm. just very profound to me. And um, there, you know, when we first started out, but mm -hmm. I wanted, I tuned in to, I have, I'm doing too much and I want to figure out what I need to, want to let go of. And then um, I need more sleep. That came up for me. So thank you. Fantastic. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Yes. And then you also put here, I'm doing too much in my life. I want to tune into what I want to let go of. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm so glad you utilize the practice in a way that suited you. I mean, that's that's everything. Yeah, wonderful. And then Anna said, I tried on adoration. <laughs> I love how you said I tried on. And found that for me, it was more of a need for admiration of my innate qualities, encouragement, praise, and reassurance. Wonderful. Great awareness. AG, while I found it hard to focus initially, I allowed myself to return and I really needed my cup being filled by the golden sun. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about that golden sun. It absolutely allowed me to stand in my power, which leads to some interesting journaling after. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for bringing, you know, um, in the golden sun, because for me, sometimes that can be one of the most powerful things that we can give ourselves. Um, I don't know for sure who's in the room, but I know that a lot of people that I've come across, as I mentioned kind of earlier in the session, do become accustomed to being the givers. And there's a lot of, and even if you don't consider yourself a giver, we live in a society oftentimes that encourages incessant doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of being in what one of my teachers calls a do it loop. Where and being that Virgo with that Mercury, you know, I'm always like, what do I have to do? What do I have to do next? So my to do list and my doing and my doing and and I it's funny because I lived in New York City and I was always pounding the pavement and then I moved to California thinking that it would help mellow me out from my doing, um, but it's it's hard to shake, right? So the Golden Sun is an incredible visual energetic psychology. It's energy psychology practice to really visually experience what it feels like to receive because what was made clear to me that was shocking but it's true it's like wait if I'm always giving and doing if I'm always giving and doing right when do I really get a chance to receive and that's a big one for me so the golden sun is a visual way to really fill yourself back up with your own power, especially when you give it that magnetic quality where that you can call the power back to you. So that, that's a big one. It's a beautiful practice. Charlene, from my, me, my core need was love, being loved, but most importantly, loving myself and being compassionate. Yes, beautiful. Thank you all for sharing these. Does anybody have any other reflections? Oh, you got some good things coming over here. And I'd say we're super related to the giving and doing in Virgo energy, yep. And being depleted and bitter about not receiving. Yes, absolutely. You are so welcome. That golden sun is a lifesaver. Um, Lewis said, my core values include rest and relaxation, eating healthy and nurturing food, connecting with and caring and supporting individuals and practicing healing practices learned. Yes, wonderful. Love the specificity, the grounding, sprouting of the roots. Yes. Yeah, that seems to be the, the magic sauce. And, uh, you know, when you ground, you connect to the earth, being able to do that big release and then fill up with that golden sun. If there's anything that you take from this for the practice, from this particular practice, it's those two things that are really, really important. Um, oh, thank you, Sandra. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you all for your for your feedback. I want to, you know, make sure I don't, um, you know, kind of forget the, the 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 kind of anchor into this because this was the exploration, right? The next thing that we want to do is we then want to take the, you know, we want to bring in the yang energy, right? The actual doing 
And so I want to just give you all an example of what um, this could look like. Yes, devotion, Hanuman. Oh, that's one of my favorite Kirtan songs we do is, is, is um, Krishna Das, that's Hanuman. Beautiful. So, um, so this is a, an, an excerpt from the workbook, and I just want to show you what this looks like. So um, this is just the list that I created for myself in 2020 when I was going through that big, you know, shift and change. Um, and it was, you know, uh, for me, my big thing that I realized was, again, because of that uh, childhood wound, I was constantly experiencing the lack or the withhold of love, adoration, and nourishment. Yet when I had to look at it, I had to ask myself, well, am I really giving myself that? And it's very different than what my therapist said to me. My therapist said, you gotta love yourself before you, anyone else can love you, you know? And again, throw a shoe, a shoe at anybody who says that to you. <laughs> this is different. What I realized is, no, I actually have to literally give love to myself, right? I have to actually give myself the things that, I, that I'm expecting others to give to me. So for me, some of the things that I came up with, I was able to put into these kinds of um these these examples. So the way the workbook is broken into sections is it, it breaks it into meditation, journaling, movement, nourishment, and then other. And so you'll see under other, you know, there's volunteering, there's attending a concert or a uh, or taking a class, listening to a podcast. So the goal here is to be able for you all to be encouraged to curate a self-devotional checklist or practice similar to this based upon your core needs. So that's really, really the goal. So again, this is going to be the workbook works, walks you all the way through this. Um, but if, just to be able to kind of get an idea of how to do that now, um, one of the things that I also realized was that my core need is um, connection. So in order to feel connected, the question I would ask is, well, what makes me feel connected? What are the things, right, that cultivate a sense of connection? So here's a real life example, right? Well, meditation, what we just did, grounding is one of the key ways that I feel connected, right? But I also feel really connected when I'm out of nature. So being able to take walks, being able to, um, you know, connect and, and, and you know, kind of let everything drop away and hear the birds and, and the things chirping and coming out of my mind, out of whatever my mind is trying to control. Um, the, the thing that I also want to bring up is, you know, I was really excited when I heard about this, this, this movement called the Soft Life, um, which basically was created by these, uh, I think there's a group of African women that were all about just being in, engaged in self-care. It was like luxurious. But what's interesting is that it kind of also crossed over with this luxurious life thing where you see all these people on yachts and boats. And then it kind of turned me off because then I was saying to myself, well, what? Does it mean that I have to have tons of money in order to you know, be able to care for myself and live a soft life? And the absolute resounding answer to that is no. So if your mind did what my mind that did and said, oh, well, I don't have, there's a couple of things that the mind will do. The, the mind will say, I don't have time. And we're going to talk about time. But then the mind may also say, well, I don't have the resources to be able to really meet my own needs. And I would say that's, that that is unequivocally not true because I take it from a struggle. <laughs> Years of me being a struggling entrepreneur and being on a very tight budget that the majority of the things that I was able to come up with on the self-devotional checklist does not require any money, you know, or any buying, you, or unless you want to just go buy some oils. I mean, aromatherapy's on here. Um, and, you know, a, a very, very clear example of this, too, of how I kind of like to be um, creative <laughs> is, um, and I'm going to stop this now so we can get everybody back on screen, um, is, you know, I really love travel. Travel is another way that I feel connected. Like, you know, but then I, I wasn't able to travel in 2020 as much, you know, and then there's been, the focus has shifted. And so the, again, the resources don't appear to be there for me to be able to get on the plane. So what did I find out? Well, I found out about an app called Resort Pass. I'm going to put it in here. I'm, I, this is, I, I do not have an affiliate link although I should since I'm pumping them like this, but I'm only sharing it because this is an example of how you don't have to get on a plane to meet your core needs. 
I mentioned that I'm a Virgo. I'm also Sagittarius rising. So there is a there is always a drive to get on a plane. And sometimes I'm really bad when I can't. So if I realize that number one, I need connection. And if I need rest, then maybe I go to this little app and see what day, what pool I can go sit at for the day or for a couple of hours. The lowest thing I saw was like $25. Doesn't require a whole bunch of money. So I'm not saying that you have to do that. What I'm saying is don't let your mind get in the way of this process by offering a million different reasons of why you can't do it, right? Because that's what the mind will do. It, it, it has a tendency or it could do. So as you curate your self-devotional practices, the goal here is to really, really tune into your core needs because trust me when I tell you, think about it. If you're meeting your core need, does it really matter how you're meeting that core need? Does it matter that you're not on the beach in Curaçao, you know, but you're, but, but yet you're, you know, you're, you're actually getting the rest or you're getting the sunshine. It's the mind again, that creates those narratives. So again, I would say focus on, yeah, in LA, in LA, cultivate friends with apartments and with pools. Heck yeah. You know, resource, <laughs> you know, utilizing resources. And then, and then a lot of times what we may discover is some of the resources are natural resources. You know, another big thing I did for nourishment um, was I would go into farmer's markets and just really, really enjoy the greenery and enjoy the freshness. So I just encourage you all to, when you're making these lists, to really tap into what's readily available to you and what's right at your fingertips. Um, the other little side thing that I can kind of offer too is, you know, um, the love languages became a very big book you know, and, um, and I actually sometimes use it to help me with this part. If your core need is love, or if your core need is uh, adoration, for example, then one thing you could do is look at that system of the love languages and say, okay, well, what is my love language? Physical, what are the ways in which I feel loved? Physical touch, acts of service, giving you gifts. Um, what are the other ones? I forget the other ones. Uh, words of affirmation. Um, and quality time, right? So that system, you can Google that and get that. If you find out that your core that your core need is love and adoration and being seen, for example, right, which was mine because of the childhood stuff, then well, what really does cultivate that for me, right? Well, actually, you know, quality time. That tends to be how I know you love me. You want to spend time with me, but how much time am I really spending with myself? If I really need that from someone else, am I giving myself that? Am I able to spend uninterrupted time with myself that is of high quality, for example, right? So that's a, just another way you can work with the love. If your love is your core need, or feeling love or feeling, feeling adored. And oftentimes that's the core need for people who have a history like mine where it may have been about abandonment and, and um feeling emotionally unavailable people, kind of like that repeating thing. So this will absolutely address that because at the end of the day, y'all, people have to match you, right? So if people come in with that foolishness and you're full, your cup is full because you, you, you're, you've been on a list and you've given to yourself and you're giving, then that, it won't be able to hold. And I have proof of that. People in my life that I attracted change, my, I have a healthy partnership with a partner who meets all of my core needs, but it was only because I was able to meet my own core needs first. So I wouldn't be teaching this, sharing this if it wasn't really, really that impactful. So I think it's a beautiful journey to take. And again, a lot of these things will be right at your fingertips. So yay. Any questions before I do a little bit of an in, um, intro to the book? I wanted to show you all a couple of pages about how it's, how it's broken down. What I'm hoping is that this is something that you can turn around and do today. You have your core need, you have an idea of what it is. Now you're gonna go look for activities, practices that help to stimulate that core need. A lot of times you're already doing those practices and behaviors, but you're just maybe not intentionally connecting it to a need. So what we're gonna have you do is just connect those two things and you'll really feel the difference. It won't just feel like self-care. Yeah. Three active activities that cultivate the soul. Some museums are free on certain days at certain times, no matter where you are. Yes. 
exactly. And then anyone who's a, a fan of Julia Cameron, I am, um, you know, she does the, um, the artist's way. And, she, and her thing is the artist date. So actually taking a day, and those of you who can't take a day, sometimes I take an hour to just be, be on a solo date. Like that has been a game changer. So the worksheet is part of the book. Um, and let me go into that. It's a very, very good segue. So the workbook, so basically to address <laughs> the issue of uh, what we talked about, which is time, time is the other one. This workbook is broken down into segments where you really only need 15 minutes to begin. So five minutes of, of that grounding meditation, five minutes of the journaling, which we did, and then an evening reflection. The meditations come with the book. So what we did today, you'll have that meditation. You'll have a five, a 10, and a 15. It's a 12-week process. So you start with five minutes, and then you gradually increase. And I think this is important because meditation oftentimes is one of those things where people would say, well, I don't really have time to do that. So you'll have a guided practice that comes with the book where you're able to listen to the guitar, to me for five minutes. Then after four weeks, you go to 10 and then you'll have each one has a weekly topic or a theme. You have weekly affirmations. And then you also have, let me take the last page here. You will also have um, daily exercises. So that'll be the meditation and journaling. And um, you'll also get an emotions list because I'm all about the, uh, the feels and identifying emotions and emotionally regulating. And then there'll also be a list of terms in the back of the book for any of the new terminology that is in the book. Um, so. I'm excited to share that with you all. Um, I will also share the link on the pre-sale amount is 2226. That's 1026, a very magical number. Um, so I'll share that. And in the meantime, I will open it up. Also, I would also like to share anyone who's interested in the workbook or just knowing any more about workshops or things like this, just feel free to drop in your email in the chat. And, um, and I will keep you all in the loop for... Um, mailing list, that kind of thing. So you'll also get a link to this as well in um, your emails. And the actual workbook will be out, the digital format will be in September with the print one to follow. So all of this in, is, so this was basically just a little bit of a, of a bite-sized amount of that. Um, my hope is that it's again, something that you feel like you can do right now. So just as a recap, ground in the morning, <laughs> do a practice that we did, see those roots going down to the bottoms of your feet or connect through your spine and then tune into what you need. If there's a need that's not being met by another person, that's a good way to figure out what you need. Um, if, if not, you can look at your early childhood needs and then begin to curate a checklist, curate a, a practice um, behaviors that help you to cultivate those. Yes, the audio version um, of the meditation that all that comes right um, with the workbook they do. So you'll, you will have that as well. And, um, and I think I'm gonna throw in some singing thing too. So I just wanna say thank you, everybody. I really hope this was helpful. Please be good to yourselves. If you do nothing else, ground for five minutes and fill yourself up with a golden sun. And I think it will change your whole day. So, yeah. Thank you, Stacey, for leading us through such a powerful self-care session today. Um, thank you to all of you for spending your day with us. Um, I would like to just quick acknowledge the Los Angeles Department of Arts and Culture for their support of this series. Um, they make it possible each month to keep it uh, at no cost. Um, also, please be on the lookout for a follow-up email that includes a brief survey. Um, I did also put that survey link in the chat box but your feedback really does help us um, ensure that we best serve uh, the HOPE community as we're planning future HOPE sessions. Um, so look out for that in your emails. And then just a quick last reminder of upcoming workshops and trainings um, that we have. Um, we have HOPE scheduled through August and September. Stacy will be joining us at our Mindful Creativity for Resilient self-care retreat. That is on a sliding scale, so you'll see a number of sliding scale options um, on our website for that. And please um, choose an option that works for you and your budget. Um, there's a variety there, and you can always reach out if you have additional questions about that program. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. 
I look forward to seeing you at a future HOPE workshop and have a wonderful rest of your day.